listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, with your host, Vivian Bell. Well, it's declaration time, and our declaration here at She Who Believes the Podcast comes from Luke 1 and verse 45. I will be declaring this word from the English Standard Version. Remember, you can choose any version that you choose. We only ask that when you speak this and declare this word over your life, that you replace the word she, or in some versions, woman, with your very own name. Because we believe that the word of God is for us, that it is just as alive and active as it was when it was written, when it was spoken, when it transpired over 2000 years ago. So here we are again, Luke verse, Luke one, verse 45, and it reads as follows. And blessed is Vivian who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Uh, Isn't that a great feeling to be able to personalize the word of God, to be able to know that his word is for you and to grab hold to it and claim it and make it yours because it is as children of God, his word is true for each and every one of us. Welcome to the podcast, She Who Believes. I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. Now, if this is your first time listening to the podcast, I'd like to introduce myself to you. I'm a board-certified biblical counselor and a mental health coach. I'm a life coach, a mom of two adult children of whom I am extremely proud to have been chosen to be their portal into this earth. I am a believer and a joint heir of the promises of God with Jesus Christ. And I am choosing to walk in that purpose by encouraging you today through this podcast. It is my hope and belief that this podcast will encourage you to do the same for others. Now, if you want to know a little bit more um, about becoming a believer, a child of God, or you need some guidance by way of counseling or coaching, please email us at Empowerment empowerment at vivianbell.com again that's empowerment e-m-p-o-w-e-r-m-e-n-t at vivianbell.com we want to thank those who have listened to us um, for the last four years we want you to know that if you're listening to this podcast at any time that you have been prayed for so today's title is made aware made aware. Believing God and living like what he said is true is not about the actions of others, but about the word of God. I know this should be simple for us to believe and to grasp hold to, right? Um, I know that it may sound like a duh moment, like, hello, if you know anything about God, like we know that to be true. But what I'm learning more and more is that there are layers to God and layers that we discover in ourselves Um, about our beliefs, about our faith, as we continue to draw closer to God. Today's scripture is uh, found in Proverbs 25 and 2, and I'll be reading from the King James Version, and it reads as follows. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. So what does this mean? I'm sure this may be a scripture that those of you who have heard it may have thought, I don't know, for years I thought about like, okay, what does that really mean, right? And thought I understood it, but as I told you guys, the more and more I study the word, the closer I um, draw to the Lord. And and, and, I, and I know this sounds like all churchy stuff, right? And I'm not speaking in a, a way of arrogance. I'm just being honest of like, the more I study my Bible, the more I seek God. And sometimes seeking God isn't even me opening my Bible. It is literally prayer time with God and just saying, hey, can you show me this? Can you show me where the truth is in a particular thing? Or let me see what your truth is in this matter. Show me where my heart is. Show me. And 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 because we may feel like we know our hearts, right? And for the most part, I can say we do, but there's times where things that happen in our lives can um cause us to our view to be tainted or twisted, or um we can perceive something or someone's actions in a way that they are maybe not intended. 
and um so I don't know who that was for because that was not a part of the the plan but um anyway um we put our hearts before God right so the more that I seek him the more I do study his word the more I spend time talking to him God literally does make us aware of his intentions his love his plans what's going on and he's not gonna he didn't always give us like detail every single detail I'm not sitting here saying like I am this person who God gives every detail to not saying that but I am saying that when we spend time with him when we seek him when we believe him there's layers and he just shows them to us right so my 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 um Vivian Bell version of the scripture right my interpretation of the scripture um is this um <laughs> as I told you guys I could I can read something I can preach it I can speak it and but when I read it again like things leap off the page right and it's not again because I didn't read the scripture thoroughly before um it's not even that I misunderstood the scripture in the past but it is again as we go from faith to faith God will continue to reveal himself in different ways it seems like at times um, I'm saying the same thing over and over again, right? Um, but it's different. I think um, in 2022, the young people are saying it hits different, right? So the scripture hit different. Um, and I'm and I'm dating this and saying in 2022 because it's my belief that this word, that this podcast will live on for thousands of years after I have left this earth. And I want to give context, context, context into how um things are being said and spoken in this time frame so when this podcast is listened to in 3022 you guys will understand what i meant when i say certain things right so anyways we're getting back to the message right um god is not hiding himself or things to punish us but it's like with any relationship you don't always let a person know everything right away right so consider if you're married or you've been dating someone or even if you have a best friend like I have a best friend um and I he didn't get to know everything about me initially um so anyways I want to put some more context on this and make it clear the gospel and salvation is clear so when you're studying the word of God he's not saying I'm hiding from you how to be saved I'm hiding from you you know like he's not playing like this game with you so that's not what the scripture means because those things are clear like totally clear he made them simple so that everyone could understand them there are no if ands or buts about the process of salvation but i am speaking in reference to god's character and his heart us loin getting to know that to know more of that to peel back the layers right And as I was stating, so I have a best friend and we've been us for over a decade. And I say us because um, you'd have to know us and our friendship to know that we're just like we're us. Like um, we are us. Right. He knows everything um, about me and I know everything about him. He's a safe place for me to be, for me to cry, for me to laugh, for me to be angry, um, for me to share when I'm ticked off about something. But it didn't begin that way. For years, it was hard for me to ask him for help and to tell him when I needed him to assist me in any way. Not because he wasn't a good person or um, he wasn't a friend then, but because of things in life. So again, we come to God often uh, damaged, broken, needing answers, um, needing God to make things clear to us. Um, but the more, um, <clears throat> and the more we spend time together, my best friend and I, and the more we spend time with Jesus, um, we, we spent time getting to know each other and, um, praying together and, and so on. Um, I have learned his heart, my best friends and God's. <laughs> so with my best friend, I can read his body language. I can tell you what kind of mood he is in from the octave of his voice without even seeing his face. He knows when to bow out of a conversation with me because I am too wound up to hear him. Not because he is weak, but because he knows me. He also knows when to tell me no. He knows when it's necessary for him to stand firm and not bend no matter what or how much I pout or express my opinion. Um, I don't always like this. I don't always like him, (laughs) but I can trust. I can trust his character. I can trust our friendship. I can trust him. Now, I'm not saying that my best friend is God in any way, (laughs) 
But what I am saying, I'm using an example of our relationship to compare to God's desire to have relationship with us. So in this scripture, when it states that um, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing and the glory of a king to search it out, he's not saying, hey, I'm, you know, let me just hide this from you. Let me just be mean. Let me just be rude. God wants us to pursue him, though. We, he wants us to know his heart. He wants us to wake up in the morning and spend time with him. He wakes us up. Like there are times when God wakes me up way before my alarm clock goes off. And I know that it's God waking me up. I like to tell you that I always get up when I should. I don't. I'm working on it. I work on it more and more. But I mean, there are a lot of days I do get up and I'm like, hey, Jesus, let's go. What you got for me? Um, Because I want to know his heart. I want to know what his what he's saying. I want to know what he wants in this situation. Right. The more we lean into God and the more that we spend time with him, when we do, we do this through prayer, through Bible study, and again, God appointments, right? Um, And that's getting up in the morning when he wakes us up. Um, The more we know and understand God's heart and love towards us, it draws us closer and closer to him. And then the easier it is for us to trust his word, to wait on him. And to believe him because now we are learning more and more about him. We're learning more and more about his heart. And no matter how long it takes, the Lord said these words to me a couple of years ago. He said, Vivian, when I tell you about a thing, a promise, he says, I am merely making you aware that what I have spoken to you already exists. Now, for some of us, it's hard to trust the promises of God. Um, and it's not because again, that we don't want to, there are life things that have happened to us. Sometimes it's because we don't study his word. Sometimes it's because we're not, um, pursuing the relationship like God is right. But when God spoke these words to me in the timing in which he spoke them to me, they blessed me and they continue to bless me to this day. Not just because I received his promise in, on a particular matter and he spoke a particular thing to me because the truth is, is that he spoke that thing to me. I believed him when he spoke it to me, but I did what we often do is we allow time to make us start doubting if we heard God properly, if we heard him right, um, or like us having to wait for that promise to, to physically manifest itself in the earth, right? So then you start trying to logically um as my um a a really good friend and mentor reminded me last night he's like when we look for reasons why god won't bless us that's not faith in action and we um we uh try to rationalize it but we can't try to rationalize things with god but i love that god loves us so much that and that he really does desire relationship with us and he really wants us to be whole that he again as i stated isn't holding himself from us hiding himself or hiding truth from us he just wants us to seek him to say hey this is you know what is it that you want from me what is it that you have in store for me what's really happening right <clears throat> Again, when God shared these things with me, they blessed me because not again, not just because I was receiving his word of a promise, but because he continued to confirm this particular promise over and over again, even when I was tempted to waver in my faith. Yes, she who believes gets tempted to waver in her faith. And let me address that. Temptation is not a sin. Temptation is going to show up. You'll be tempted to lose it. You'll be tempted to to doubt God, you'll be tempted in so many ways, but the temptation itself isn't a sin. The sin comes when we actually commit a sin that we're tempted to to commit, right? So when those things show up, when you're tempted to waver in your faith and God comes and confirms his word and he shows up right as you're about to stop believing him, he speaks again to you and you hold these things close to your heart. They are what I fight with, honestly. And I have fought doubt with this promise and with these words for days and months and years since this particular promise right he said I'm not he said I'm merely making you aware that it exists anything that God has promised to you right whether it is in his spoken word that when he speaks to you within your God appointments or your God time 
or if it is when you're reading his word and you choose to do like we do here at the podcast and believe his word and make it personal for us. And we put our names in the scripture and we say, blessed is Vivian who believed, right? When we make it personal for ourselves, when it's that written word, whether that's what you're doing or you're holding on to something he spoke to you, he's making you aware that it already exists. So you can believe God. You can literally take him at his word. Um, I was in this Bible study, right? And um, I I was reminded by this particular person in their book. So um, the person talked about how we say, ask, believe, receive. I even have a shirt that says that on my re- website by his direction apparel. And um, she went over the scripture and she said, um, Marshawn Evans Daniels is her name. She wrote a book called Believing Bigger. And I'm using her Bible study right now. But she talks about how we read a particular scripture and we interpret it, ask, believe, receive. And she's right. We do, right? But she addressed how we must first believe. Because if we don't believe, we may never ask. And not asking, believing affects how we receive. So today, I just want to encourage you that God's promises, both written and spoken to your spirit, are actually declarations and announcements that these things already exist and are yours. I want to encourage you today to believe this truth, to ask God boldly for these things and to prepare to receive them. Ask him as your father, ask him as your joint heir, ask him as your friend, because God is your friend. And he wants to bless you. He wants you to know him. He wants you to know his love for you so that you can depend on it, trust it, and walk in it. I pray today that you receive these words, that they settle in your spirit, and that you that you dig in, that you dig into the scripture and you find truly the heart of God, which is love, and all of his promises for you, and that you will believe that they are already yes, and that you will say the amen required. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. And I'll see you back here next week. You've been listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, where we encourage you to stretch your faith and to believe God for the impossible. 